Uh, hi, everybody. So uh, this is a presentation about a concept for a new way of exploring planetary surfaces. Uh, it's an airbag hopper uh, for, in this case, lunar surface and pit cave exploration. So if this uh, concept was just coming from me, you would not want to believe in it. But there's a solid team of uh, JPL engineers behind this, led by Ed Riedel and Laura Jones Wilson. Uh, I have also enrolled uh, some students here at NASA Ames, Nicholas Benz, and at the SETI Institute, Kevin Philauer and Cameron Moy. So uh, this is what we are fomenting. Uh, first of all, uh, not a lot of the moon has been visited from the surface, less than 0.002%. Meanwhile, every place or almost every place that's really interesting geologically or scientifically is hard to get to. Uh, Artemis, meanwhile, wants to get astronauts to the lunar south pole by 2024, so there's a schedule uh, imperative here. Uh, and then, meanwhile, we have some strategic knowledge gaps, SKGs to fill. Uh, we, we might want to la scout our landing sites because, as uh, David Kring reminded us this morning, the lunar south polar region is, is not benign in terms of uh, terrain and difficulty of mobil for mobility. And then you also want to ask, assess the H2O deposits because in the end, we know very little about the H2O deposits. Uh, what's their surface like? How do you transition from regular uh, lunar surface regolith to, to uh, an ice deposit? Is it uh, stepwise? Do you have pinnacles to get around? We really have very little information about, about the ice deposits at, at uh, the scale of a rover or of a human. So we need, we're anticipating the need for a rapid way of robustly exploring and scouting out terrains on the moon at low risk and low cost, and a system that would be able to access all terrain. So we've come up with this uh, uh, inflatable airbag. Imagine Mars Pathfinder, ex except that you're not deflating the bags, and of course the spacecraft itself is a lot smaller, uh, so you have a large volume to mass ratio. And this is a craft that would uh, travel across the lunar surface by leaps and bounds, literally. Uh, it uh, launches with a cold gas thruster, in this case uh, nitrogen. If you go on Mars, you can use CO2. And it can also do the pop and pounce thing, which is to essentially deflate the bags and then violently inflate them. And that will essentially launch uh, the, the system on the moon up to an altitude of about 100 to 400 meters, depending on the terrain. Uh, and, and you move on. So this is actually a, a way of doing fast, robust, low-risk, low-cost, versatile, scalable, and networkable exploration of the moon. You can imagine having several of these uh, systems. And each globe trotter can cover 1 to 10 kilometers per day. So this is not, of course, the mode where you want to do very sophisticated science along the way. This is sort of a, a reconnaissance tool that gives you access to a wide range of terrain. In fact, uh, any terrain is what we would argue. Uh, so let's say at Shackleton, you have a challenge, a crater that's 20 kilometers across, 4 kilometers deep, slopes that are 25 to 33 degrees in, in, in steepness. Uh, on top of that, you've got the permanently shadowed regions. Uh, so this is a system that would allow you to explore not just the rim area that's lit, uh, but also the interior of the, of the crater and reach the bottom of uh, Shackleton. In other words, survey an entire radius of the crater over the course of a day or two. Uh, the rim area you could take a week or, or two, even two weeks to, to explore, and then in a day or two you could be down uh, to the bottom of the crater. Uh, uh, so in some sense we're thinking that Globetrotter could be to Artemis what Ranger and Surveyor were to Apollo, which is sort of a surface reconnaissance tool. Uh, Globetrotter could also assist astronauts as a uh, sort of a BB-8 type of system once they are on the moon themselves. So with students, we've uh, plotted out some uh, concept traverses. You could explore an Artemis landing area. This is all in advance of Artemis. You could uh, go in and out of the permanently shadowed regions along the rim, uh, reach the South Pole. Meanwhile, detect where the uh, ice is most accessible, image it with uh, flash imaging and LED imaging. Uh, and of course, in this second scenario, you can uh, enter Shackleton Crater. So you travel along the rim in and out of the permanently shadowed region, and then eventually you go for your, your deep dive. Into, it's a one-way only trip, of course, uh, uh, into to the bottom of Shackleton. Uh, and meanwhile, you're, you're mapping uh, the, the ice along the way with your neutron spectrometer. That's the, uh, the key instrument that we suggest having on board, in addition to imaging the ice along the way. 
Uh, so no need to read all this in detail, but the spacecraft is light, 50 kilos. So you could, or so, so you could essentially piggyback it on a number of opportunities to go to the moon. On the bottom left here, you see the first uh, mission concept uh, where you essentially climb up the rim of Shackleton. So you, there's an elevation change of two kilometers over a distance of about 35 kilometers. You get to the rim in the South Pole at the end point. And then for this, on the right, you have the second mission concept where you are essentially cruising along the rim, going in and out of the permanent shadow regions, and then at some point you do the deep dive into the crater, uh, which is a four kilometer uh, downslope run. Uh, now, I got particularly interested in this concept because of its promise for exploring pits. We now know of several hundred pits on the moon. They are, of course, particularly interesting environments. They are uh, not experiencing the wide delta temperatures of the surface. They are shielded from micrometeorites ionizing radiation from sandblasting of uh, rocket exhaust as well. Um, I'm not sure about their future as a habitation uh, environment for humans, but as an exploration goal, I think they're particularly exciting, especially if we could find some of these caves or confirm their presence uh, at high latitudes, because in some scenarios, um, uh, the sunlight would not be entering the pit at all. And so you would be faced with essentially the situation of a mini polar uh, permanently shadowed region uh, with some ice deposits right underneath the opening of your skylight, uh, if that were the case. So last year, we uh, identified some candidate pits near the North Pole of the Moon in Philolaos Crater. Uh, how would you go about exploring these places and uh, being able to access their potential ice is sort of what's uh, driving some of my interest in this. So this is how you would approach it. You would uh, come, so bearing in mind that in the challenge with these, exploring these caves is that you have no sunlight, l very low temperatures, no direct comms to Earth. The terrain is rough and you don't know exactly in what way it is rough once you are in the shadow regions. So you want a, a very robust entry and descent and landing system, so to speak, into the pit. Uh, stay there briefly, do your survey quickly, and get back out to send the data back and maybe even move on with your, with your exploration. So this uh, globetrotter concept can do a survey overbounce where you don't dive into the pit quite yet. You sort of map out its uh, entrance area. Then with the red trajectory, you sort of free fall into the pit. You bounce around randomly. You settle eventually. And as you bounce in and settle, you map out, of course, your way out so that when you're done with your neutron spectrometry measuring uh, potentially the ice content inside the cave, imaging the whole cave as well, uh, 360, but in a sort of a spherical uh, volume. Uh, you fly back out, that's the solid green trajectory, uh, with your rocket thrusters, with your coal gas rocket thrusters, uh, and then you continue your tour. Uh, so this is how this might play out, for example, at the Mare Tranquilitatis pit, which is beautiful. Uh, you sort of do the survey in yellow, then you do the free fall entry descent in red. You bounce around inside the cave, you come to rest, and then when you're done, you fly back out with your thruster and you, you move on. Uh, none of this is, uh, I was going to say rocket science, but it is rocket science, but none of this is uh, particularly shocking now that we've landed on Mars with airbags several times and uh, can, can navigate. So uh, as far as the payload is concerned, it's very uh, flexible. Uh, we figure that a simple and lightweight payload combo might be uh, 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 color imaging system that would allow you to, to image your environment at high resolution, 10 plus megapixels in color uh, in all directions, a neutron spectrometer. Uh, NASA is currently two NASA provided lunar payloads that are neutron spectrometers that could be uh, helping us uh, measure not just the hydrogen content of the environment, but also uh, the bulk composition uh, of the regolith uh, in those environments. And then accelerometers that would um, help us with gravity surveys, slope surveys, topography measurements as well. So no need to read this, but uh, the three big bands are showing you three types of mission concepts that could be combined into one mission or have a globetrotter dedicated to each. You have lunar surface missions where you don't go in underground at all. You have a permanent shadow regions lunar pole mission. You have a pit case mission. And the diff that little payload that we just suggested here would fill in these green blocks and allow you to address the, the science that's listed. Uh, we would also address, and in some cases possibly retire, some strategic knowledge gaps uh, as listed by, by LEAG. And so what's in orange here 
uh, I don't expect you to read that either, but just to get a sense of what would be covered in these uh, different types of environments, uh, the, the strategic knowledge gaps that even something as simple as Globetrotter could help you address. The design concept is inherited from NASA and JPL's inflatable <laughs> rover studies, but of course also the airbag experience with uh, Mars Pathfinder and the two Mars Explosion rovers. The avionics uh, would be commercial off the shelf, uh, similar to what was flown on uh, Marco and Space Micro. Uh, the uh, propulsion system, cold grass thrusters or, or pop and pounce, the baseline power system, photovoltaics, so they would, they would be buried uh, at the core of, the, of this airbag system with the airbags being translucent. And if you're on the moon or even on Mars, you still get plenty of daylight to, to charge your, your, your photovoltaics. Uh, it could piggyback on a comm satellite in geostationary orbit, make its way with a uh, little solid stage to the moon, uh, descend to an altitude of about 100 meters in, with solid motors, and then from then on, the airbags inflate. They're not made of air, it's nitrogen, once again, for the moon. And then you release the system, the, the, uh, the lander system, the airbag system, uh, from an altitude of about 100 meters, and from then on, your, your mission on the moon has started. So this is showing <coughs> how we can achieve, actually, with this uh, approach, even meter scale precision in our landing, uh, even in the worst situation in winter uh, at the South Pole. Uh, you could essentially have metric precision landing uh, for the system. So you could really take it to where you have, for example, sunlight uh, on the ridge of Shackleton or anywhere else uh, on the moon. Uh, of course, we propose to do some field tests. Uh, one site you might do this is at Houghton Crater on Devon Island. Houghton is 20 kilometers across, which happens to be the same in scale as Shackleton is. Of course, we don't have the slopes that you have at Shackleton, but uh, you still have a an opportunity for operations at that scale. And then the uh, whole area surrounding Houghton Crater is replete with uh, giant boulders and ejector blocks, which would be a good place to sort of practice getting around and navigating with, with Globetrotter. Yes. Yes. I'm done, okay. Mars is the final, moon to Mars, final destination. Pits, uh, caves on Mars, of course. Phobos, Deimos, small bodies. There's no end in sight to what you could do with this. Uh, so I'll leave you with that thought. And if you have questions, feel free to email me or the team. Thank you. We have time for one quick question. What kind of marks do you, your bounces leave on the surface? And this is a double-edged sword, of course. You're altering the environment, but you're able to maybe look at images before and after, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a sort of a, a string of, of pits. It's like a very, it's a, like a controlled series of secondaries, secondary impacts. <laughs>